And just like that, the market has hit new highs for 2019 and even better, well, it's making up that gap from October. So if we break above there, that's going to get interesting. A lot of bullishness. The market closed up 329 points today. I'm going to go over the main stuff that happened, but there is something very, very interesting with the April effect. Since 2005, the Dow Jones has not dropped in the month of April. Uh, so it's setting where we're at. We're just above 26,000 here. First day of April. Again, it did make a 300 point breaking 26,000 on the Dow. But since April, we have not seen those moves. So it's going to be interesting. I want to talk about what happened today in the market um, and just overline this stuff, kind of what we're looking forward with this week. I, you know, I'm Josh, by the way, I forgot. I have to start introducing to that. I love all the new viewers. I really appreciate you guys. Drop a thumbs up on the video if you like this content. So YouTube shows it to you and to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new and do not forget get to check out the live streaming channel it's in the comments it's in the description it's up there it's everywhere we're live 30 minutes before market open monday through friday shout out the chat let's go that was awesome a great day everybody in there it's a few like 600 700 people in the morning so it's been pretty uh it's been pretty lit is what you could call it you know that's why i got my trading sleeve for the push-ups but let's talk about what happened here um a lot of stuff i think Jax wants to say hello say what's up Jax? okay he's very interested but uh, at the end of the day, market went up. What caused it? It's China. So Shanghai Composite, let me see if I still have it pulled up here. There you guys go. Shanghai Composite went up 2.58%. And this was because of a lot of buying on Friday from foreign buyers. But people saw the manufacturing numbers. And those were supposed to come in very, very low. That, uh, you know, uh, Asian stocks all rallied. But they it surprised. It was a huge, huge gain on there. It led China stocks. It led European stocks. European stocks went on that. Those went up. That led to the bond yields coming uh, higher, which that eased the pressure. I don't know if you guys saw TLT. Let me put that on there. Um, and again, I have these few companies up to show you. Also, I posted in the watch list tonight, too. Every night we got that. But TLT just dropped. The rates went up. The curve went back to normal. So it got rid of some of those fears. But uh, that was... Overseas, it drew it drew into the Europe stocks and then the United States. But the real leader today, again, the Dow Jones Transport. So if you guys have been watching these videos, it is actually leading. It's above its 200-day moving average substantially. Uh, it, it's been making some moves, you know. And then small caps did a little better, but keep your eye out on for that. Today, we did see Boeing lead. Um, you know, it, it, it gapped up and it led all the defense stocks, which, you know, that contributed to the Dow a lot. But the big winner was the transports. And even at close, uh, I missed this, but that's TLT. Kroger, Amazon announced that they're lowering prices at Whole Foods. That affected some of the grocery stocks. But, you know, we'll see what type of real tangible effect that has. But other than that, that was really the main case. And as we've been talking about rates and everything else, I think the market was bullish. It's breaking out a, a key resistance point. We're right here on the yearly chart. We're seeing kind of, you know, where everything's going to be going. So uh, it's it wasn't really that much besides that. We have some earnings coming out today. We've had the earnings coming out. And that's what I'm thinking. You know, the market is definitely setting up for that. A lot of you have asked about the buyout blackout period. That is coming to a start now, barely, uh, but coming here in the next few weeks. We're going to see the effect of earnings, some of the liquidity, but again, the name of the game is rates. You know, the pound even went up today. The dollar didn't move, but Chinese stocks weaken. Uh, China's an important thing to watch this week, and also this week, we're going to get some auto sales. We had retail sales today, and the market, they were pretty abysmal, and the market still was down with it. Uh, <laughs> they liked it. Um, what else did we get? A lot of even the Europe PMIs, uh, they, they got crushed, but really china was a big leader so that's going to be interesting we still are waiting for developments of the trade talk but beyond that my thing is brexit i've been saying it i've been saying it and i'm waiting but even as the market has been behaving even with what we're doing with the april effect all that realistically i'm not going to set up on a play until we see that uh probably the day before brexit so april 12th is what i would keep my eye on but that was pretty much it, you guys. You know, it's short and sweet today. There wasn't much. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. We have auto sales and the non-farm payrolls coming in Friday. Those are the only things. There's a few data from other countries that could have an effect, but it seems like the market has really been eyeing in on, you know, the main principal drivers of, of growth that we're seeing on the S&P 500, which would come from China and Europe. So that's the main thing. Earnings is setting up. The market was less volatile. Oh, and that's something I need to actually put out, actually, before I finish it. Let's take a look at the VIX. 
Um, so you could see the fix actually didn't really buy it as much. So believe it or not, oh, let me get a like a five day. You could see that's today. But the, even though the market went up a lot, you got to really understand it. It stayed the same price as it was yesterday or on Friday. And, you know, we still closed up on Friday, but it wasn't anything like today. You know, we gapped up and we held it. And that, you know, today definitely broke the trend of having a gap up. Let me show you guys the, the pre-market so you could get a better idea. Or even the day before, you know, it was a, it was a large gap up. It was a large gap up. We did drop a little bit in the morning, but it, it held up and it kept going from there. And that did break that trend of whole of the whole sell the rip type thing and all that. So it was very interesting to see. But the VIX didn't buy it, uh, honestly, until the end of the day. It did sell off a little in the VIX. You know, it's harder to go down at these levels. However, you should have saw a, uh, you know, a real killer on that. And that's what I've said in the watch list is watch for that to drop. But other um, other ETFs like the TLT and again, related to rates, oil had a great day. But other than that, everything was pretty solid. It's a good start of April. Uh, hopefully, maybe we'll see if there's any April folks, <laughs> April fool's jokes with uh, all that data that came out. But the market is really eyeing China and, and Brexit and rates. But as, again, until acted upon, if you guys haven't checked out the stock trading course, unless acted upon by an equal or opposite force, you know, a larger force that could send it down we could see it uh, edge up here until you know we start to break that that new highs and once we get past that october high around like 287 um, it's the next stop is straight to the top and you know this is interesting if you guys saw the video i made on the yield curve i talked about you know how the yield curve is normal now and usually right after the inversion it does cause some panic but this is what we want to watch and watch how the market digests that so you guys know what i'm keeping my eye out for i'm gonna post the watch list tonight like the video subscribe and i'm gonna see you on stream tomorrow morning let's go